Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we are going to explore the wonderful range that watercolour gives us. We're going to paint one flower in three different styles with different levels of detail. So grab your paints and let's get started. Right, I'm so excited to do this one today because I paint flowers in a range of styles of watercolour and watercolour is so good for that. Um, so we're going to look at the poppy today in three different levels of detail. Um, but whilst I mix my colours up, let me tell you about Skillshare, who are sponsoring today's video. Now, if you don't already know, Skillshare is an online community curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And they've got topics that include illustration, design, photography, video, even how to be a freelancer. But sometimes it's helpful just to learn how to feel good within yourself before you even start to create. And trust me, I really value these kinds of lessons. So a tutorial I wanted to tell you about today is the ultimate self-care playbook. Um, discover and nurture your centered self with Jonathan Van Ness. Now you might recognize that name because Jonathan Van Ness is of course one of the fab five of Queer Eye on Netflix and his amazing book also came out a few years back and he's a really inspirational guy. Well, he's done a special class for Skillshare where you'll discover an amazingly insightful teacher in him and he is taking us through steps to be brilliant in self-care and self-care is something we could all be better at and this class really helps you really see the value in slowing down and looking after yourself. So if you click the link in the description below and because they're sponsoring me today the first thousand people who use this link in my description will receive a one month free trial to Skillshare Premium. How cool is that? Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring us today. So let's get on with our lesson today. So I need at first my size 12 Pro Art Connoisseur Series 100 brush, which is a big old mop brush. And I'm gonna begin with the simplest, loosest poppy that I can give you. Now, as a left-hander, I'm gonna be starting from the right and working my way left. I'm sorry for all of you who will find that a little bit um, counterintuitive, but I didn't wanna have my hand smudging over the pictures as we went if I tried doing it left to right. So anyway, some of you will adore this style, some of you will find it really quite um, intimidating, but loose, loose watercolor is all about having as few brush strokes as possible and being really confident and fluid with the brush. So let's have a go. So I am just gonna squish that brush down and I've twisted it and sort of come off with a sort of tapering point to get a first petal. And then I am going to do it again. And I'm trying not to sort of control what's happening too much and that is what we want. So that is the first sort of shape of my poppy and I don't need that huge brush anymore. I'm gonna take a slightly smaller one. I've got a size four Pro Art Masterstroke Series 60 here. And we've got this shape of the poppy in cadmium red. It's really sort of loose, it's really dark. We've got some lovely um, sort of frilled edges here. But what I'm gonna do now is just wake up the Mars Black in my palette, as well as the Sap Green that I had. Now I'm gonna just allow this Sap Green to just kiss the edge. And that is my loose watercolor poppy. However, I am just gonna add a little bit of the Mars Black in there. And did you see that was a single dab? I did not do anything more because there is so much wetness going on there in that loose watercolor poppy, we do not need any more. So that is the simplest, loosest watercolor poppy that I can offer you. And now I'm gonna paint you one in my more controlled loose style, which is probably the style you know me for best on this channel. So I'm gonna just paint it down here in the middle. So I'm gonna use my size six brush and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start in a fairly similar manner here. And I'm just gonna paint some red poppy petals, but I'm going to paint them 
so that they're not touching. I am still trying to do it in as few brush strokes as possible. But there is a bit more to it this time. So I've still got a sort of central space there. But what's going to happen is we're going to let these dry and then I'm going to paint in more petals over the top that are going to have a lovely sort of translucent quality to them. And I'm just going to add, for whilst we let these dry, just a little bit more red just into the centre there. So we need to let these dry 100% and then we will come back to do the next layer. This poppy is now dry. <laughs> this one still isn't, just shows how much wetness was on there. So I'm going to come back in and I'm going to put in some more petals and we're just going to overlap them into the middle there. This time I'm being, I'm, I'm allowing myself a few more brush strokes just to make sure I really control where I want things to end up even though I'm still sort of really squashing the brush down in there. So I'm still trying to achieve that really like rough scent, there's a rough edge to the petal. I don't want it to be too perfect. Now we can, whilst we wait for that to dry, just drop in the tiniest bit of Mars Black just into the center of those petals I've just painted in. Just a little bit, not too much. And what's great is this petal that we painted in the first round it's completely dry so it's it's not seeping into that front petal which means we're just sort of peeking into the center of that flower. Now I'm getting some sap green on my brush and I am going to also get some green gold because when we're painting in a slightly more detailed style like this one here we've got more scope to start building up a few layers so I am going to there's the center of my flower I'm going to begin my stem with some green gold and now I'm going to take a smaller brush so I've got a bit more control and this is a two tenths. Just got it a little bit wet but I didn't need to put any colour on it. And now I'm going to dab some sap green in there. and just running it down the side. There we go. Oh, that's looking nice. It is funny, I, I know that this is very much my favorite type of flower painting, because what I love is you just get so much effective technique in there and, and you get wonderful results having not done a huge amount of work. So we're just gonna let um, the center dry and then we'll do just do a little bit of detail in there. Our center is dry. And now I'm going to use a combination of the greens and the black to just create a little central dome here. So I'm just doing some little C curves coming down in the green gold and just doing a little dab there. And then a little bit of Mars Black and I'm using my two tenths brush. And I just want to do a few little dots, nothing too extreme. And I think we'll leave it there for that one. Now the last poppy I'm going to do, I'm actually going to use pencil because we are going to look at a, a far more sort of detailed approach. So there's my pencil stem, I'll make it a little bit higher so we've got a bit more room. And there is a curve which is going to tell me sort of where the base of my petals are going to fall and also will angle the sort of center of the flower for me. So I'm going to draw in some petals here and 
we've talked about the sort of frilly edges and the raw edges of the petals in the looser versions but here we are going to actually have it a bit more sort of drawn in and prescribed for us there's our our sort of base of our flower so now just drawing in some of those curves and then we're going to have always anchored from the center there there we go a poppy with far more detail already than the others and I'm going to start with a nice light layer which is actually going to have a little bit of a sort of pinky tone we're also going to get going to get some of the oranges in there when you paint in the sort of more detailed style there are far more sort of things to consider so I'm going to start sort of petal by petal and I'm going to use the pencil lines as my guide and my brush strokes I'm using a size 2 brush here I am going to keep the brush strokes sort of coming always out from the center and I'm just going to be sort of cleaning off my brush allowing that color to almost run out and then back into the center there we'll get a nice bit of dark alizar and crimson mixed with cadmium red and we'll just allow that to creep out but we really don't want too much going on there so I'm just cleaning my brush off, just getting rid of too much paint. And now, with a slightly smaller brush, my two tenths, I'm just going to start teasing that colour out. And we're really using the brush strokes, little brush strokes, to get a texture on the petal. Very different to what we've done beforehand. And then at the far end we're going to meet it with a bit of that colour as well. And bleed that in and down in. So we're sort of getting a highlight about three quarters of the way out on the petal, which is just giving it that sense that it is curling over. So you can also see that at some points the petal is wet and we get a nice smooth blend and other points we get a really nice bit of texture where it has dried. Now a, a real sort of trick here is to get a bit of blue involved in your red colour because it makes a sort of browny purple colour when you mix blue and red together. And that is the colour that I really want to have just coming out from the depths there. So I've done this singular petal and what we're going to do is we're now going to work petal by petal and build each of them up until we've got a full flower. So I've been working my way round, my way round, and I've just come to the final petal here, which is a sort of upturned curve. probably do a little less darkness on this one because it's right in the centre of all the others.
Okay, and whilst we let that dry, we can pop in our stem. Now the stem will probably be a similar kind of approach to this one. So with my size two brush, I'm just starting with green gold and working my way down the pencil line. And then a bit of sap green just up at the top there, right in between the base. And then I'm going to take an even smaller brush. I've got a four tenths here and just actually get some of those tiny weeny hairs visible on the stem using the sap green and just sort of stretching out whatever colour we've already got. So I'm just going to turn the page around. Doing something like this can be a bit of a make or break for uh, a piece because of course it's a very very delicate little bit of detail so you just got to try and be as light handed with it as possible so this is what you want to invest in some really small brushes for the brushes I use the Pro Art Masterstroke range although they're a little bit tricky to get outside of the UK it's not impossible and Jackson's Art at the time of filming, and I've put an ep uh, a link in the episode notes below. That seems to be the best place to get them at the moment for relatively affordable shipping. Okay, and now in the center of the flower, again, we're going to look at the more nuanced colors here. So I'm gonna begin with the green gold. Just lightly surrounding the edge of that dome but leaving a sort of lighter space in the middle. And then that kind of browny, purpley, red and blue mix that I had is going to be quite useful here. Just need to mix up a bit more of it. There we go. I'm just going to actually seep some in to that central dome as well as it's a little bit of Mars Black. And now we've got a little bit of wetness to play with so I'm just going to start pushing that about to create a detailed central dome with these sort of C curve lines and then starting to push out little C curves start to make all the filaments and anthers so then going to have some Mars black dots And the last thing to look at is a little bit of shadow because even though we've got a huge range of colours in there, this is the most detailed flower of the three and shadow is something that I, I often do a lot of when I'm painting the controlled loose style um, but I didn't put any in today because I was sort of interested in more of the techniques to get the petals and centre looking good but for this last one I think it's worth just including it. So let's get my two tenths brush, my second smallest. I've got this lovely uh, grey blue mix from using French ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And I'm just going to use it very cautiously 
underneath trying to really capture the sort of slight ripples in the petals and also the sort of areas where one petal overlaps another. Just down there on the stem and there we have three very different levels of detail of flower of poppy really loose controlled loose and detailed I'd love to know which is your favorite style and what style you enjoy painting in the most so do tell me in the comments Thanks so much for watching and thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I want to say thanks also to my patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you're getting on. And of course, if you subscribe, then you'll never miss another video. Okay, until next time, bye.